Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Dan. And today, we're going to be talking about, well, I guess this whole ISIS thing. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Islamic terror. Yeah. Terrorism. Yeah. It's September 11th as we're recording. It's yeah. 13 years on. And president from, uh, from two, you know, the bombing of the World Trade Center. Right. Um, and uh, President Obama made a big announcement last night. Yeah, so, so we're going to be chatting. We, we've, we've done our damnedest to avoid the subject. Yeah, I wanted but, it just to fucking go away. But uh, apparently they're not going to do that. <laughs> apparently they've, they've it's opted out of require just... require intervention. So, someone <laughs> should have suggested to them the just go away tactic. <laughs> uh, but apparently that was not... They, they tabled uh, that and, yeah. uh, and went on with something else. Yeah. Oh, well, here's what I got. I got a, uh, first of all, uh, before we get to that, we'll do some stories. And one of those stories is a story about a gay wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, a joyous, happy affair. One would hope. <laughs> um, ended kind of badly. Oh. Well, or, or rather, uh, the, the, the gay wedding was, took place in uh, Egypt. Oh, that's not where I would expect the story to go. No, and and they videotaped it, and it was sort of... This happened back in April, and it was just a gay wedding. Um, it's not legal to get gay married in Egypt, but they did it. Oh, okay. And then, um, and then, the, in, and then in uh, August, a video of it went kind of viral. Hey, look! Gay people in Egypt! Hooray! Okay. And Egypt said, you're under arrest. Oh, God. And arrested not only the, the wedding party, the, the, the two gentlemen who were married, but uh, seven, uh, well, nine of the 16 participants uh, were identified and seven were arrested. Oh, my God. Uh, they were charged with uh, in incitement to debauchery and publishing indecent images. Wow. Well, okay. Oh, all right. So incitement um, to debauchery. Strangely, um, it's not illegal technically in Egypt to have homosexual sex, but they very much frown on it. Well, then what is and it they, an incitement to? That what debauchery are the they thing talking is that, about? The thing is that they can catch you up on a hundred different morality laws. Uh, there was a recent uh, crackdown in. Uh, in April, there were four men who were convicted and sentenced to eight years in prison oh. Oh. Um, after holding parties that involved homosexual acts and uh, where women's clothing and makeup were found. Because <laughs> uh, we're not going to have any of that drag stuff here in Egypt. What if it was just like, you know, hijab? Up, 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 up. No. <laughs> it's modest drag. Absolutely not. It's not what one would normally. It's more cross dressing. Do you than think drag, a ninja could be arrested for drag in Egypt? Like a ninja who they they they're like that's that's too much like a like like a burka, and then they erase <laughs> arrest them. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. For okay, a I was just like I just what because what they're wearing underneath? How would they? No, know? no, no. The image of the face being covered oh okay was the thing that i was going for okay i guess it depends on what they're doing while dressed as a ninja yeah if yeah they're lip syncing on stage right exactly <laughs> in some you know i think i think standard ninja <laughs> is a gray area ninja in heels totally gonna get arrested <laughs> totally gonna get arrested clearly drag well that's yeah. i mean it, i'm not surprised by by any of that i'm never surprised by just about any story that comes from uh certain parts of the world the yeah, <laughs> yeah. more islamic parts and of, of course and of course yeah the islamic parts of the world uh traditionally not tremendously friendly to the gays so, no no so there you go no huh all right well that's too bad yeah um well i i have a story about somebody who uh is uh not too friendly to the gays. Okay. Uh, one Mr. Vladimir Putin. Oh. Um, uh, who apparently is, uh, according to 
the uh uh patri- patriarch filaret of the kiev patriarchate mm. um uh, says that uh mr putin is going to hell oh uh and now that- wait a minute <laughs> I thought that <laughs> he I faces mean, this is, eternal this is, damnation unless he repents. This is Eastern Orthodoxy. What yeah. is this? Well, yeah, it's it's Russian Orthodox. Wow. So, what does he need to repent him of? Of sorts, I guess. Um, it's not really Russian Orthodox uh, because it's not in Russia, I guess. But it's Orthodox Christianity. It's Orthodox. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he needs to repent of uh, being, uh, well, being Vladimir Putin. Basically, I mean, think about I mean Vladimir Putin and Russia. Russia's well, I mean, in, 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 in invading yeah. Uh, Ukraine. Yeah, okay. And this guy in Kiev doesn't like that. Yeah, Ukrainians and tend so, to frown on their country being yeah. invaded. And so the Kiev Patriarchate uh, broke off from the Russian uh, or the the Moscow Patriarchate, right? Um, a, a number of years ago. Uh, they did so um, uh, after uh, the fall of the Soviet Union, actually, um, and because you know they're their own thing, yeah, and uh, and they don't like them Russians no and more, and they don't, they don't. So, uh, but yeah, he's uh, uh, here's here's what he says. Um, he says, with great regret, I must now say publicly that among the rulers of this world, there has appeared a new Cain. Oh. As in not, Cain and Abel? Uh-huh. Oh. Not by his name, but by his deeds. Mm. Uh, like the first fat fratricide of history, Cain, these deeds show that the aforementioned ruler has fallen under the action of Satan. Oh, dear. Yeah. Fratricide, by the way, is the killing of one's brother. Yeah. Just, yeah, uh, it's a good word. Yeah, it is a good word. It's uh, you know, my, my favorite of the sides is uxoricide. <laughs> I believe... <laughs> Source. Uh huh. I believe that's the killing of a spouse. Is that what it is? Oh goodness, that's not good. I mean, I'm not a fan of actually doing it. You're a I, fan of the word. I'm a fan of the word. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's should a killing. Be, a killing of one's wife. Yeah, it should be used more often. Yeah, as a word. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. I don't. I don't think it's any surprise that people don't like Vladimir Putin. <laughs> no. Um, Especially Ukrainians. <laughs> I, it, I, that that seems to make sense to me. I do like that he compared him to Cain. Like, well, because that's the least too... comparable of all of the. No, he's the, their brother. Their brother nations. Oh, okay, I think is the point that he's making. Yeah. He's he's our brother, and he's coming and he's killing us. Is, so he must be Cain. Is is the Ukrainian <laughs> patriarchate related at all or at all affiliated with the? Uh, the Courtney Cox Patriarchate, or the <laughs> I don't, what? Courtney, the, it's the Arquette thing. I'm just oh. going for Arquette. And never mind. Okay, that's funny. <sighs> the David, Dan, the David so Patriarchate, funny. and the Courtney Cox Patriarchate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on then uh, from the bad puns. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, from from the Ukraine, I'm coming back to the good old U.S. of A. Woo! <clears throat> Land of freedom. Woo! Uh, separation of church and state. Woo! Ish. Woo! Yeah. Here's so um, several listeners uh, sent this one in. Uh, there, so an airman in the United States Air Force, uh, based out of uh, Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. Mm. Um. W- Wanted to re-enlist, was all set to re-enlist, uh-huh. uh, ready to go, and he was signing the paperwork, but he didn't. he's an atheist and did not want to sign the So Help Me God portion of it. Ah, he was okay. just like, hey, can I That's just fair. do this without that? Yeah. Nope. You have to do the they So Help Me God? They are insisting that he has to sign the So Help Me God uh, portion of the, the oath. He has to take the oath with the So Help Me God. Why? Uh, cause that's their rules, I guess. Uh, because apparently they want to be sued by the <laughs> Fofurf is why. Um, he was denied re-enlistment on August 25th for refusing to take that oath. Uh, and then, uh, 
So they uh, they got a letter from the American Humanist Association to the Inspectors General of the Air Force. Um, Monica Miller, an attorney with the AHA um, Legal Center, the 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 Apigani Humanist Legal Center, uh, said that the airmen should be given the choice to reenlist by swearing on a secular oath. Yeah, and uh, and she said they'll sue if he's not allowed to reenlist. Well, can't he? Couldn't he also just maybe cross his fingers behind? <laughs> right. Like, wait. The, say, say the one with "So help me God," but the, just be like the most. The thing so with the most integrity God. is just to lie. <laughs> no, which is he's right. crossed his fingers. Crossies. I had crossies. Yeah, but then he's secretly not actually in the Air Force because he was crossing his fingers the whole just time. Just at the one point, <laughs> he's a, he does the whole pledge and then. Cross fingers, so help me God. Yeah, but what if he forgets Uncross. and he crosses his fingers like during other parts of the pledge? No, 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 no. Well, he oath. has to be smart enough to get the cross right. You got to get it right. Yeah, at just the right amount of time. I, it's just yeah. So anyway, he's got uh, he yeah. Apparently, he's got until November to change his mind and swear a, a reenlistment oath to God, <laughs> or well, the Air so- Force uh, will give him the big old fuck you. But, what the uh, hell? So yeah, that's what we're dealing with here. What? I <sighs> this is a thing. This is, I had no clue that this was actually a thing. This is the United States of America. I can't. How we can are still compelled fighting this fight to 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 do the <clears throat> uh, uh, that part of an oath. I don't know. I mean, clearly they'll lose if they. Uh, I mean, if this gets to the courts, precedent will say that they lose. I, I just, I don't, I, I, we're as baffled as you are, folks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, again, this, this goes under the category of, I'm not really that surprised. Right. But, but I am surprised. Right. Because there couldn't be some easy accommodation or that that, this is strangely hadn't already been worked out. This isn't some high school in Alabama. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this isn't. This the United is, States Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's really weird. It's shocking, and there, now there's going to be hubbub and whatnot. Hub and bub. Yep. All right. Um, well, uh, uh, someone has a new book, Dan. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, there's a number of books I've heard about recently, but this one caught my attention. Uh, Sam Harris uh, has written a new book, and oh. he's written lots of books. Yes. Up till now. You know. I've read several. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he's, he's actually now, the title of this one is called, uh, Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion. Oh. Um, and he is advocating, which he has done for a little while now, but now in written form, uh, he's advocating for, um, Buddhist based mindfulness meditation. I'm all for meditation. And he, uh, it, it's, it's actually really... Uh, quite. Uh, well, it's not surprising, but it's uh, it's it's very nice to hear sort of uh, spelled out very, you know, eloquently. Mm. Um, his sort of you know stance on uh, on how spirituality is not uh, that doesn't require any kind of belief in God, and when right. it does, that's when it goes wrong. He's been writing you several know? essays leading up to this mm. uh, on the same topic. He's mm-hmm. been sort of. Uh, I think trying to whet people's appetite for the book. And I, so I've read some of that and I think here's the thing. A, I think we, we have a problem with nomenclature here. Okay. Because it's hard for me to believe in a spirituality when I don't believe in a spirit. And I don't, so Uh, I mean, don't get too hung up on the words. No, I'm not going to, but what I'm saying is that we do have a lexical problem. I think that there is a word problem here. Only, only, only for the beginning, I think. Sure. And the other thing is that... Because like, I, don't, I don't think of spirituality as being a reference to um, a spirit. Well, I guess I, I, most people don't. I just think, I mean, A, that's the root of the word. And Sure, it's the root of the word. And I have trouble like, because a lot of people, whenever someone says, I'm spiritual but not religious, I ask them what that means, and they don't know. Well, because, but that... And I believe it with that phrase, um, because it's it's a it's a phrase that um, 
it, it, it doesn't really mean a lot. And what, what I take from that phrase is that this person hasn't spent a lot of time thinking about their belief system and that they, you know, that sort of stuff. This is different. This is an atheist talking about spirituality. And mm. I mean, I mean, we might need to come up with, you know, I mean, an, I mean, maybe we could say that, oh, I'm a spiritual atheist, as much as that sounds really gaggy to me. But, you know, like... This is why or, I or want you just a keep different it to yourself. Phrase. This is why I want new wording. You know, this is why I w- because I want there to be a new fr- a way to say I am a mindful, uh, I am a meditative, mindful atheist. Mm. No, not that. I like that wording. A mindful. I, yeah. I, I mean, or something along those lines. I mean, I'm all for. And I, the other thing that bo- boggles my mind a little bit. I don't like throwing babies out with bathwater, but I do. Th- I mean, Buddhism is great. Mm-hmm. I have I have no major problems with Buddhism, other than it's mired in centuries of tradition that we don't need. He's not talking about being Buddhist. He's I talking know. about using the kind of meditation that is common in in Buddhism. I get the, well, that. mindfulness. The I kind get of that. I just I, again, I just want it to be. I I. I tethering it even in how you label it to a a spiritual slash religious tradition to me is 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 problematic. But okay. But but I think I the think, idea is right. I think and so. Pro- I go with the, that. The problem is if you just talk about well, I I think what's what's really 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 interesting here for me is that there is a real acknowledgement coming from one of the new atheists, right? Right. These Science-based people, guy. Right. They, 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 they're, you know, new atheism is about basically the eradication of religion. Right. Or they, at least they would love to see religion just go away. Sure. But what I, what I really like hearing from someone of, 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 of that ilk is that they recognize that there's something that comes from a, um, a religious tradition mm. that is actually that evolved in a way that actually benefits the the people who participate in that right. in that activity. Right. And Again, we don't have to throw babies out with bathwater. Exactly. We can say we don't want the religion. Right. But there are practices and there are useful things right. coming out of this. We don't need to ignore it. We right. can we can say, hey, we're gonna and, take that. And that's and it's lovely to hear. Because yeah. it's something that I've believed for a long time that, that, that you know, it, there are things that it, it's an acknowledgement that there are things about our condition that are the, the human condition that are a little more complicated than that, that, that are emotional, right? That are, that are based in the mind, right? And so a, a, a concrete scientific explanation isn't always readily available. Indeed. And and so it's really nice to hear that that from 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 some of these folk that that a suggestion that we focus on those kind of activities and and on those kind of uh having experiences which can help the mind and help that that sense of of spirituality. Mm. You know. I do like that. I think that that's good. I think that that's important. I don't know that I'm going to rush out and start, you know, doing mindfulness, you know, meditation, but maybe I will. Who knows? Could, couldn't hurt. Yeah. I think, uh, I think, uh, I'm, I'm, I very much support, um, those kinds of practices. And there is good science to show that it's healthy, to show that the, it's positive. Right. The, sh- the science show, but I'm talking about that sort of that moment of that inner peace that comes from it. Sure. That unexplainable thing, except for the fact that you've had the experience. Right. And I would say that it won't be long before they have an explanation for it. And I'm fine with that. Right. Um, but in the moment, you know, the... Yeah. It's nice to see the, uh, an, an, an understanding that... Well, and what we've got here is, that. is a neuroscientist... Exactly. Who's, ...who knows, you know, how human brains work, at least as well as anybody knows how human brains work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'll go with him on it. Yeah. I'll, I'll go down that road with you, Mr. Harris. Yeah. Sounds good. It's nice. I think it's cool. We'll have to actually 
uh, maybe we should actually read the book when yeah, it comes along. And, I'm sure I will. And have a nice discussion about it. Yeah, that would be good. We'll get him on the show. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. We will definitely 100%. <laughs> I'm guaranteeing right now that we will get him on the show. Uh-oh. Everybody forget All that right. I said that. <laughs> um, uh, so, you remember back in April... When mm. you and I uh, attended a conference here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm. Let's see what a- April conference. <laughs> it, was, it was the the conference. It was the the yearly conference of the American Atheists. Oh yeah, that's right. Held, I, remember, held I remember something about that right here in our backyard. Backyard. Mm-hmm. Um, at, literally in my backyard. It was interesting. Everybody came over. We had a barbecue. You have a Hilton in the <laughs> in your backyard. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, well. There's another conference that we might want to consider going to mm. that's coming to Salt Lake City. Yeah. It's the global religious. It's the it's the world's largest and oldest interfaith gathering. Ooh. The Parliament of the World's Religions. Oh. And it's it's gonna park itself next year right here in our little hamlet. Oh, that's fantastic. I guess. I mean it's Why a, not? no, I think it's great. It's a it's you know, it rep- there are representatives from all over the world, from oh, yeah. almost every faith tradition you can imagine. And they get great high profile like speakers. Yeah, I mean, often I don't know that they've announced all their speakers for next year, but you know, they have had speakers like Nelson Mandela, the mm-hmm. Dalai Lama, mm-hmm. Desmond Tutu, mm-hmm. Jimmy Carter. Yeah, that's the one I'd want to see. Jimmy Carter. Yeah, uh, he might. He, I think he's a, he's a possible. Why not? It's it's in the U.S. this year. Yeah. It hasn't been in the U.S. I don't think. Uh, it's been like twenty some odd years. I think. Yeah, it's been it's been a long time since it's been in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, it was started in Chicago. Um, it began in 1893 in what? conjunction with the World's Fair. Really? Mm-hmm. And it's annual. Yeah. Wow. I believe so. Yeah. Wow. So coming here, we're gonna we're, we'll. I we'll have a chance to I think we should go to it. I think you and I should be there. It's see, it's right yeah. here. We don't have to travel. So there will be many many and we, and I think we should try and get press passes just so that people we can walk around with bag with badges that say thank god I'm atheist on them. <laughs> Cuz that's funny <laughs> to me. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay. So there you go. Well, very good. That's we'll exciting. Ha- we'll have to hear a oh, lot damn. of uh, inclusive prayer, I think. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Maybe we can... It's maybe... nothing worse than an inclusive prayer. Oh, uh, well, they're they're boring. That's for sure. <laughs> they definitely don't take a stand on anything. No, no, no. It's but uh. but it might be interesting to see how they how they end up wording it. How how everybody tries to include. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Allah. We uh, we're all pretty happy uh, to be together. <laughs> so, thanks for that. Uh, amen. I don't know. How do you end an Islamic prayer? I don't know. I uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you could just say um, end of prayer. End of prayer. <laughs> and scene. scene. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. So, um, there you go. All right. Uh, well, speaking of the Dalai Lama, mm. uh, I have a story about the Dalai Lama. Oh. Uh, apparently, um, sometime this last week, I believe, he said that he uh, that he wants to be the last person to hold the job. The last Dalai Lama. The, uh, the 14th and final Dalai Lama. Right. Um, you know, I mean, that's... Boy, howdy. Uh, that's a thing. <laughs> um, obviously, he is, uh, as the Dalai Lama, he is the head of Tibetan Buddhism. Sort of and, the de facto uh, head. It's not an official position. No, no. But but clearly understood right. that he is. Right. And uh, and definitely in the eyes of China. Uh, right. He is. Sure. Um, and uh, because of that, he has been in uh, exile for, pff, how long has it been? Since the since the fifties, China's not a big fan of anyone who thinks that Tibet might be its own country. No, 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 no. So, anyways, um, 
so this whole thing of like um, the Dalai Lama starting to say that you know he's he wants to be the the last one. Well, China had a, had a response. Oh, um, he uh, China uh, has basically come out saying that the Dalai Lama needs to respect reincarnation, and he needs to be reincarnated. What? What? <laughs> Why the fuck did what? <laughs> they're like excuse me don't you respect reincarnation we want you to be reincarnated the, they want him to be reincarnated because he'll be reincarnated in tibet and they can arrest find him. the baby or the child oh my god and if they don't like the child they'll install their own dalai lama well, what to me okay because they've already done that that's that's actually based on another um buddhist leader in tibet um a lower lama uh who uh when was re when the person was reincarnated and all the the monks identified the 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 new uh the new lama right um they uh the chinese didn't like that that lama <laughs> and so they found their own little kid who was under their control wow so the so clearly china really desperately wants because if if they do that they're able to set up a schism sure. within uh, sure. uh, Tibetan Buddhism. Kay. These people ha- have the long... They play the long game. They're good at it. Here. They're yeah. good at it. Here's the, here's the thing. First of all, you got to love the balls on a country that officially has no religious <laughs> beliefs. Saying, dude, what the fuck? You got to honor your shit. <laughs> you got a contract with eternity here. <laughs> yeah. You How can't, dare you stop being reincarnated? You can't just you can't just give that up. <laughs> Your religion says so. We're holding you to it. Yeah. So yeah. like the the level of balls <laughs> of on that one is outstanding. Yeah. Great job, China, on that front. <laughs> and the other thing is that I it seems like they're playing long game, and uh, this Dalai Lama sees it coming a mile away. Yeah. It's like oh no we're we're ending that one. Oh, yeah. you thought this was just going to keep going? Oh no, no, oh, sorry. it's fine. I'm the last. Yeah. And so he's at, he actually said, um, this is from the Dalai Lama that he uh, that the institution has served its purpose. Um, but um, oh, where's the quote that I that I had from him? He was talking about how um, it's it's this is a high note. For yeah. the popular yeah, for, for the Dalai right. Lama. That's right. This is, the Dalai Lama finally has reached like global. Uh, fame and uh, is wildly popular and he's like any other Dalai Lama who isn't as as popular and as famous is just going to be a disappointment right (laughs) is basically what he's literally saying uh in terms of the uh, ongoing nature of the Dalai Lama this is our mic drop moment yeah mic drop yeah I'm out yeah (laughs) <laughs> he's like this is the best i've ever been he's like you know what i i did it pretty shitty a couple times i've done it 14 times it's been some have been good some have been less good and the i am i'm i'm the best dalai lama of all time <laughs> no one can ever beat this dalai lama <laughs> i love it uh, fine go out on a high note i think he's right it's 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 the whole you I know, think, yeah. every comedian in the world knows when you get the big laugh, yeah, cut it off. Yeah. Yep. And he that's where he's at. I love it. He's uh so the Chinese are going to be like, "Nope, nope. He die he's going to die and he's going to like his last words are going to be like, "I'm not coming back." And the Chinese are going to be like, "We found him." <laughs> of course they're going to try. You see, he of did come back. Of course they'll try. No he was what. lying to you guys. He couldn't help but come back. Yep, he he does. It's not his choice to make. He loves the spotlight. This <laughs> one, and we'll give him a spot. What a spotlight! Right, exactly. And and this Dalai Lama loves China. Yeah, that's how you know it's not the Dalai Lama. Right, exactly. the The moment that the <laughs> Dalai Lama is like, "Hey, uh, who doesn't like Kung Pao?" <laughs> that's when you know that's not, this is not our Dalai Lama. <laughs> that is not the Dalai Lama you're looking for. <laughs> Well, if, yep. if you have anything to say about uh, any of all of this, you're welcome to write in to us. You can do so by getting to uh, the interwebs, going to the uh, electronic mail, and uh, typing something to 
thank God I'm atheist. No, sorry. Podcast at, I forgot how electronic mail works. Mm. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. You could also call us and uh, leave us a voicemail. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Indeed. Uh, or you can go on to the uh, other parts of the interwebs, like such as the uh, Facebook page or the Twitters. That's facebook.com slash TGI Atheist or at TGI Atheist. And of course, there is our website, thankgodimatheist.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. It's, of course, it's a good one. It's a patty break. Patty time. And uh, boy... He's just chiming in good. <laughs> Pat, the first one is from Anna, who says, Our daughter shocked us with the news that she has a girlfriend. Yes, a homosexual relationship. Our children were raised in church. We're battling this and letting her live at home. No one is allowed over. She's 21 and was always very feminine. This came out of nowhere. I'm devastated and also a worship leader in a large town. Should I step down from ministry? The question is not about your daughter, but about yourself. The answer is, of course, you shouldn't step down. Why should you? I mean, you know, so your daughter's doing what she's doing, but you're still serving the Lord. Um, I think she needs somebody to help her get her identity straight. She, she may not be right in this. She may have thought she has a crush on some uh, older girl along the way and that she's actually homosexual when she's not. I don't know. I don't know. You know, people, they now say it's, well, I, I, the whole question of sexual identity has gotten so blurred in the press these days, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. uh, but why is she that way? Was she molested when she was younger? Did somebody, you know, uh, authority Sometimes just in the world today, you know, they're they're telling kids to explore and to, mm. you know, it's well, crazy. The, the, the girl on girl movies more and more and more. Yes. They're getting straight mm -hmm. actors, actresses to play lesbians and and straight men to play homosexuals, and it's it's you just. And if you say anything against homosexuality, you are just <laughs> hooted out of court. But I do think you need to love your daughter and give her a chance to work this out because if she gets deeper and deeper in it, sooner or later she's going to be disillusioned. She say, "This is wrong, and I want to come out of it." All right. Wow. I, uh, girl on girl movies. Yeah. That's called porn. Yeah, I got I got news for you, Pat. <laughs> that phrase is only used for porn. <laughs> That's the only way that that phrase is used, uh, and you seem to be familiar with that yeah, phrase. Yeah, girl on girl. So uh, I was watching this girl on girl movie. I was watching some girl <laughs> on girl. I mean, uh, a phrase. It was a movie. Uh, it was a movie called uh, about some girls who were I don't know. Yeah, I uh, cheerleaders. I'm afraid I'm going to have to hoot him out of court. Oh no! I'm hooting him right out of court. rude, Dan. <laughs> He actually said that. There, yeah. They'll be hooted out of court. Who, out of court. I don't, <laughs> what is that? Are you 411 years old, Pat <laughs> Robertson? How the fuck old do you have to be but before you realize uh. that no one's going to say hooted out of court? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. He's 79. He doesn't He's care. 70,000 years old mm. is how old Pat Robertson is. It seems like it. I hope he goes on forever. I do too. God love him. I will be sad. <laughs> the day I, he the dies, day he di I will we be. will mourn you and I. What will we do for breaks? I'll tell you what. It'll all be that Brian Fisher asshole. I, he, you guys can count on this now. Mark your calendars. <laughs> the day that man dies that week, we do an entire segment that's just a tribute to Pat Robertson. Yeah. yeah. We should. We we we'll have to. We have to. Somebody who's brought us so much joy. Right. That man. <laughs> and and keeps, he's at his own expense. And but. keeps us guessing every step of the way. Oh, you never yeah. know. I mean, the fact that he was waffling a little bit on what homosexuality was. Like, he's like, well, you know, they say with sexual identity, you know, it's, it's so murky. I can't even decide what it is. <laughs> it's almost as if they have points here. It's almost <laughs> as if the science is uh, is on their side. I, uh, so. these, these girl on girl films almost have me convinced. Right, exactly. They're beautiful, I, beautiful. You, you, oh, you can't imagine. <laughs> it's so nice, and uh, you know, everyone's the love so, that they share. Everyone's so pretty. It's, <laughs> it's how can that not be godly? I mean, it's just murky. That's all. All I'm saying. It's just getting cloudy. I, it's hard to say. Yeah, the guy on guy definitely not. No, 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 yeah. no. That's still not okay. No, we all we. I think we can all agree, Frank, that there's nothing okay about guy on guy action. Mm, it's, it's 
not bad. <laughs> I'm gonna go on to some emails. What? Um uh I will start with Bo. Bo's writing in uh regarding a an email was it an email or a voicemail? No, it was an email that we got last week uh, okay. from a former BYU graduate oh. who was concerned she didn't want to resign from the church because she was worried exactly uh, yeah. that BYU would might revoke her degree. Right. Uh, Bo writes in, he says, Hi, Frank and Dan. I'm writing in response to a listener's concern over your last episode. Uh, the listener wants to resign her membership but has some anxiety about revo- the church revoking her BYU degree. I resigned my membership from the LDS Church over 11 years ago. I divorced my temple-sealed spouse, 21-year marriage, sorry about that, uh, and or congratulations, two years ago. (laughs) Uh, Despite my resignation, she had to go through the application for a temple-sealing cancellation, as though I was still a member. Oh, my God. This, so, uh, okay, so to explain to everybody, I'm going to have to back back up and give some uh, Mormon background. When two Mormons are married in the temple, they are considered sealed together for mm-hmm. time and all eternity. Yes. Forever. Uh-huh. And uh huh. Ever. Now, getting a divorce, a legal divorce, is not easy, but it's it's simple. It's a process. We right. all know how that works. Getting the the LDS Church to agree that your spiritual sealing has been canceled, mm. that you are unsealed, is a Trick and a half. Yeah. Now, so, it's not a problem for a man, because if a man is sealed to a woman and wants to marry another woman, he can do so, because polygamy. But if a right. woman is sealed to a man and wants to marry another man, she cannot be sealed to the new guy unless her sealing is canceled from the old guy. Right. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, she had and, to go through some rigmarole for that. And apparently... This guy, Bo, uh, his, it, <laughs> had to be a part of it. I'll go on with the story. Um, uh, uh, this application was required a letter from me. I wrote my letter saying that I think that her remarrying in the temple is great for her. I had a hard time not being snarky because it seemed completely absurd that my baptism and priesthood were null, null and void, but the temple ceiling was in good shape. <laughs> what surprised me was the letter I received that informed me that her cancellation was approved. And then he includes the, the, the text of the letter. He says, what surprised me is not only that this is a form letter, I found an identical text online, But the wording in the third paragraph clearly assumes that I'm still a member in good standing. The corporation's membership department is not only in is not in any kind of of communication with the temple ceiling cancellation department. I think the church should take the church takes the do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing a little too literally. (laughs) I agree with your assessment that the listener has little to fear. From what from an organization this out of touch with its own operations between arms or hands or whichever wing or or metaphor. Hmm. It is funny because when you uh, resign from the LDS Church, they f- send you a very stern letter that says, "Oh yeah, you realize that we are canceling all of the everything's yeah. that you that you uh, participated in." But clearly, they don't. Clearly, they don't get that. They're it's so bizarre. They don't. They 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 haven't streamlined their databases yet. I I would have just sent back a copy of the the letter they sent me saying I was that all that shit had been canceled. Yeah, just be like, um, already done, guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or just, I hey, mean, he's clearly very nice, and he's and he's and he's yeah. being very nice to his ex wife. No, that's and that's the I right can approach. imagine that's absolutely. I the can right imagine approach. plenty of exes going, nah, figure it out yourself. I don't need to write to the LDS church. Right. Yeah. So, and there's no bishop to call you up to kind of strong arm you into it. Either. Right. Exactly. It's just like, <laughs> mm, you're on your own. Hope you can get them to figure it out. I took care yeah, of everything they, I needed to. They surely would figure it out. It would just get it all tied up for right. a while. Yeah. And, yeah. No, he absolutely did the right thing. Yes. Very, very well done. Uh, but seeing as how you uh, brought up uh, sort of Mormonism, um, I, a caller called in oh. with a story about life uh, at, a, at a Mormon institution. Oh, so sure. I, I thought this would be fun to share. Hey, guys. This is Jeremy. Uh, the other day I was over at the BYU bookstore, and uh, you know how they've got uh, mannequins over there displaying the BYU wear? Well, I, as I was standing there, I noticed that uh, one of the employee bookstore employees was uh, changing the shirt off of one of the feminine mannequins and uh, I couldn't help but notice that the 
breasts of the said mannequin were had actually been covered with duct tape across the nipples as to not as to not titillate us too much. But you guys might like that story. Fine. <laughs> well, what if that is just highly titillating? I, I know. Mean, <laughs> what's what's amazing to me, and you and I were discussing this earlier, Frank. It's amazing to both of us that they even changed the female mannequins in view of anybody uh, that yeah. of any no patrons. Yeah, no kidding. Like even even with the duct tape covering, I can see well, them duct getting tape would be for the employee, right? Who right. has to be subjected to this horror, right? And clearly, some sort of uh, curtain you know right type thing should, should be, be erected absolutely. around the mannequin or the mannequin should just be removed from the floor right i mean this is that's the this right is way the modest it. way of doing it i can tell I you i always heard that they that they uh that they filed down the nipples well they did no that was a story that happened at ZCMI this is a, oh, a local formerly right. it was at one point that's church right. owned a department store right. the first and biggest department store in Utah for the longest time right and uh and yes there was a there was a problem they ordered a bunch of new mannequins the mannequins had nipples prominent nipples probably and uh, or maybe not even that prominent no they were probably just nipples but they did show through <laughs> some of the clothing and they were ordered to file them all off now i can tell you a personal story uh... because at one point our friend dave you know dave yeah, yeah. uh he was working in as as a retail a visual manager for uh-huh. a local or no for an, a national uh department store chain. right right and he had brought me in i was looking for a little bit of extra cash it was around christmas time and he brought me in to help do the christmas displays he just okay. needed temporary you know seasonal help for that so right. i did that and i was changing a mannequin and got literally like not scolded but tisk tisked because i had a naked mannequin uh i had a topless female naked mannequin out in the store oh oh tisk tisked by whom by an old lady some mormon lady not not even old <laughs> like some middle-aged mormon lady was just <gasps> you should not oh, oh. You Why I never. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Uh, are you? What? That's not a person. Yeah. Do you know that that's not a real person? It's the form of a person. I mean, granted, she comes to life at night, <laughs> and 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 goes and out. It's and, delightful. Oh, and she's and so has delightful. so much fun. And Meshach oh. Taylor comes in, and he's all <laughs> gay and so. Wow, Hollywood. And now <laughs> we have dated ourselves pretty dramatically. Oh, not too bad. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, for those of you who get that joke, uh, you're welcome. I'm going to write uh, or, or read another email. This from uh, Ethan. This is just a quick uh, thing. Hey, guys, I noticed that your episode that a few episodes ago, you said that Islam translates to peace. While it's true that its root word salam means peace, adding the I sound in front of the word makes it translate to submission or surrender. Uh, that's right. I did look that up. And, yeah, and he he's is right. correct. Um, what if you put the I at the end? Is, is salami? <laughs> what does that mean? Delicious. <laughs> Everyone likes salami. <laughs> who doesn't like cased meats? Mm. Except Islamic people who can't oh, they eat wouldn't it. wouldn't like salami, They don't they? get to eat salami. Ah. <sighs> uh, now, now they're very confused. There's no peace, <laughs> when, you can't, no peace. when you can't have salami. Oh, let me let me oh do God. one more. Um, this is from Clark, and this one's going to be tricky. I'm warning you ahead of time. Oh, yeah. For okay. you and me. Okay. Hi, Frank and Dan. I just listened to your last podcast about marriage, and I was wondering if I could please get your advice on something. I'm a high school student still living with my parents who have been married for almost 20 years now. My dad got a new job, which requires him to go to different states often. I share the same Apple ID as him on my phone, so I get all of his history. He doesn't know he doesn't know this. I have found porn and stuff like that on his history before, but since he started going to on his business trips, a new website has popped up that advocates cheating and provides its users with easy location based sex with other users. I am totally shocked and confused by this, and I have no idea how I should react. I want to confront him, but I am ninety percent sure that that will not go over well at all. Do you guys have any advice for how I should go about this? Oh boy! Uh, so this is a tricky one. I we wanted to to do this one just for 
for a few reasons. First of all, parents, don't share your Apple ID with your kids. Well, not if you're going to be uh, <laughs> looking at stuff that you wouldn't want them to see. Right. Um, but you inevitably are. We all look at stuff oh. that we probably wouldn't want kids to see. Yeah. So uh, just don't share. Apple IDs uh, share things. Yeah, they do. Like a lot of things, actually. Yeah. That you may not even be aware of. So that's the that's um, the, the more you know pro tip of the day. Yeah. Uh, as far as in terms of what, advice for for our young friend here, uh, that's where it gets tricky. Uh, I would like to start by disclaiming and saying that <laughs> you and I, Frank, we don't. Have no credentials to no. answer this question. We no. are not healthcare professionals. We are not parenting experts. Neither. Yeah. We have both been the children of parents. Yeah, that's about it. And that's as, far as, as close as we come to any kind of expertise on this subject. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, you and I talked about this. You had one solution. Well. Uh, or or the, one one possible road down which he could go. And I don't think that our two. So our, our, what we talked about were mutually exclusive. No, not of at each all. other. No. Um, so why don't you say one of the th- one possible thing that you thought of? My my uh, my my suggestion would be um, a uh, uh, maybe it might be a little path of least resistance <laughs> <laughs> approach, um, but it's um, I, I would I would go to. Um, your father, uh, if I were you, and ask for your own uh, Apple ID. And you might get asked why. And a, I, I, per, I would keep it really simple and just say, because Apple IDs actually share quite a lot. And I can, and it, it makes it possible to see things like viewing histories. For, and for for like for people, us to see each other's things it was for others yeah exactly to see each other's things and uh and and i think that um it might be a really good idea for me to just have my own right. and if he doesn't put two and two together and if he's concerned about what well you know you're still a kid and i want to be able to check up on you and blah 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 just be like yeah but i can also it goes both ways and I, I can also see yours, and I want you and to have privacy. I want as you well. to have the privacy that that you should probably be having right now. So that's one way. And to... and oh. it will hopefully, um, if he's willing to talk, could lead into a discussion. Um, and if he's not ready, he can just go about his merry way. You haven't brought anything up, right? So that's one no. way. One way of handling. And that's how far I would go. And I don't disagree with what Dan's about to say. Uh, I will I, say that. So. I think I think that you... Uh, so here's the thing. That is a, a very... Uh, I think it's a lead-in, actually. So that's, so that's one way of handling it. I think the thing is, though, that it sounds to me like you feel like you have a need to confront your dad on this, to yeah. talk to him about this. And I don't... And, and, and I think you have a right to do that if you want to. Frank and I don't know your dad. Yeah. And we don't know how he responds to things. And we and every dad is different. And some dads are very uh, cool about shit like this. And some dads are can be awful. Yeah. And so we don't know your dad. Um, if you feel like there's danger there, then you should probably trust your instincts. Yeah. And maybe hold off on con- confrontation, and talk to a school counselor. Talk to mm-hmm. uh, you know, find someone that you can talk to that you trust. I think that's key, and and work through your your emotions about this and your feelings about this uh, in that way. If you if you trust your dad enough to uh, handle this well, then yeah, I I think you can talk to him about it respectfully. The one thing you don't want to do is get into your parents' marriage. No, it is not. I I I, I have to be clear about this. Your parents' marriage is none of your business. I know that it feels like it is because it affects you, right? But it's between them, uh, and and that's and so I, what I wouldn't do is go running to your mom. But if you need to talk to your dad about this, I I think you have the right to do that. Just make the call uh, advisedly. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're right now what we're doing, and you may want to hold off on this uh, on making this decision, Clark, because we're putting the call out to our listeners. If you mm-hmm. have credentials. <laughs> that make you able to answer this question better than we do. Uh, please call into us. Please yeah. write into us and help uh, young Clark decide 
um, what he should be doing in this situation. If, no, if, for no, if nothing else, uh, Clark, understand you are invading your dad's privacy, um, unwittingly, probably. Yeah. But you need to. Uh, but somehow we need to get you out of that situation. Yeah. Out of the situation where you see things that you that he wouldn't want you to see. Yeah. Um, so somehow you've got to get out of that situation. If nothing, you know, if nothing else, you need to get a new Apple ID. Yeah. Um, that's that's your that's own the main thing. Yeah. Which clearly is tricky it's... because the question could be it, it could just be oh hey yeah you know what it's about time yeah or it could be or no. he, he could or you know your dad could have Why? a heart attack all of a sudden and then because i mean not a literal one hopefully just like a <laughs> giant panic and freak out yeah absolutely um so okay there you go that's yeah. that's as good as we've got so far <laughs> All right. Do you want to play the another voicemail? Yes. Um, and this is a response. Uh, you know, we talked about marriage um, a couple shows ago um, from trying to kind of parse it out from an atheist perspective. And we kind of went one direction and uh, which wasn't down the road of like traditional marriage. And so we had a caller call in and, and, and kind of talk about a different side of, of uh, or a different take on marriage. Hey, Frank and Dan. Love your podcast. Just heard the thing about marriage. And uh, just wanted to put my two cents in. I got married when I was 30, so I got done with all my partying and wild times. And then when I finally met someone, I felt that we would be better together than we would be apart. So we did do the whole fidelity, monogamy. And I think what people say when they talk about being as one, I'm going to be married almost 20 years you really do start to kind of become the same person, not in a bad way, but in a way that you really become sort of interconnected and intertwined. And if you have children, you get bonded even closer together. So I choose to think of it as a positive thing, not like you're just completely capitulating and someone's swallowing you up, but that the two of you together make a better team than you would be if you were apart. Okay, just a few cents. Love you. Bye. Awesome. Thanks for the there call. There you go. Yeah, I had I had said that uh that I think that two people becoming one is exactly half the number of people you need in a mar- in a marriage. <laughs> uh well, yeah. But yeah, I mean I get the team thing. Yeah. You want to be you want to be a team. Well, and you know, like she's uh the caller has had a, a, an experience with marriage that that differs that differs right from and, your experience and, and it sounds like she has it's sounds, a great marriage. Sounds and a great, awesome. Good, great relationship. So, that's, I I just liked uh, bringing a different perspective. Yeah. Into the, the whole thing. Uh, I've got one more email that I'm going to do. All right. Uh, this is from Kim. Um, and she she uh, she said she was born and baptized Lutheran, uh, and then her parents remar- divorced and remarried. Her father raised her. I was rebaptized Roman Catholic. I guess my mother's religion wasn't the right religion. Go figure. Hmm. Anyway, I really wanted to resign from the Catholic Church. I understand that it isn't quite as cut and dry of a process as the Mormon Church, but there has to be an email address or snail mail somewhere that I can send a letter to. I've already sent an email to the parish that I was rebaptized in, uh, requesting to be dropped from their roles as a member. And while I wasn't expecting a response, good thing, because I didn't get one, <laughs> my actions don't feel as concrete as I'd like them to feel. Does that make sense? Uh, In my effort to do my due diligence, I'd really like to send my resignation uh, up the Catholic chain, but I'm having a hard time finding contact information. Uh, I wouldn't expect you guys to have the list of contact information to every religious organization, but perhaps another listener might have some information they can share with the rest of the class. I'm certain that if if there's one listener uh, asking, there's more who want to know too. Any help is appreciated. Uh, so there you go. I, I, I wanted to read that just because, yes, I do think we need to put out a call. I know that there have been, there's been a lot of confusion about what Catholics can and can't do and and stuff. So I'm confused about it. I tried to look up the legalities of it. Yeah. And the, from all of my research, it appears that when you get a letter to an organ to a religious organization saying that you resign from that organization and this is only in the United States of America. I right. only know this for the US. Right. Uh technically they have to honor that and they have to uh withdraw you from their roles. 
Now, the Catholic Church has said uh, uh, different things at different times, but the most recent thing that I could find that the Catholics themselves, as like that the Vatican has put out, okay. said, fuck you, we don't have any way of getting out anymore. Right. The most recent thing that I found. But legally in the U.S., they can't do that. Okay. So I th- this, this is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. But that's the best information that I've been able to track down. Right. I've even talked to lawyers about it, but everybody seems a little confused about the whole thing. Huh. And I didn't talk to a lawyer who was for whom this was their bread and butter. Right. I talked. I, I maybe we should contact. You know, we should contact like the Fufferf. Hmm. Or something. Yeah. Anyway, if you as a listener have information, if you've done this, if you've been through this process, if or whatever. Uh, please write into us. Please call into us. Whatever, and l- help us understand. If you've got numbers, names, yeah. contact info for yeah. for and for any church, you know, yeah. we'll publish it. We'll we'll may we, we'll try and we'll get it up on our website or something, absolutely, so yeah. that everyone can can resign because we're still doing our our push for resignation. That's still very much on. Nobody's gotten their cards yet. The cards are probably going to go out. Please allow six to eight weeks for delivery. Um, we're we're slow here, but, but but it's still happening. We really want you to do it. Go to thankgodimatheist dot com. Uh, click on I, the I quit post in uh, in under my I under yeah. the Dan uh, posts mm-hmm. and and read all about it. But but we're pushing for it. Everybody gets an atheist card once you've once you've uh, resigned from your church. And those of you who weren't ever in a church and were lucky to be raised without it then we'll give you one too i guess so reluctantly yeah you don't need something to like help heal the scars <laughs> right but they're still <laughs> in an in an oppressed minority no no so no we'll and clearly the, we'll they, the they get one no we'll, we'll I, give I'm, you the card i'm all for it yeah um well okie dokie I, that, so, that does it for me the, thanks for uh thanks for all of your input everybody uh, again i and i want to reassert one thing uh we 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 need to say this every now and then we get a lot of emails. We get a lot of voicemails. We can't use them all. Uh, please never be offended if we don't use your email or voicemail. We always appreciate it. And if you have more things to say, don't let it dissuade you from writing or calling in again later. Absolutely. There you go. All right. So, moving on. Mm. Shall we go to the part of the world containing Syria and Iraq? <sighs> that Not lovely for a million dollars. Mesopotamian sort of area. Where uh, where whole swaths of the area are now controlled by a group calling themselves the Islamic State. Yeah. They need to get shit figured out over there. Because <laughs> I would go leave some tourist dollars in that region. Oh, yeah, but you're mm. not going there now. No, no way. No. Uh, so we've been avoiding the topic of ISIS or the Islamic State or whatever they're calling themselves today. Yeah. For a long time because, A... Uh, it's horrific and complicated. Yeah. And you and I don't aren't news analysts. No, so and, much. and it's to be honest like beyond just sort of a, a surface level following of of events over there. I I don't really get too concerned. Well, I mean I'm concerned in some way, but like I just don't get concerned about going deep into the story of like you know, which Islamic this did that and who's heading up that. I mean, I just, it I just don't get that It gets pretty deep. difficult to keep track of yeah. everything. I mean, ISIS has now separated themselves out as being something new. Mm-hmm. But they, for the, you know, yeah, I mean, for the longest time it was like, oh, this, re- this new pop-up group is awful. Oh, this new pop-up group is terrible. Oh, right. look at who's beheading over here. And this right. is like, oh, I just can't. I just, I do not have the energy. Right. But uh, yeah, these guys are are they're I mean they're doing some new things, and that's part. Of, and since it's today for you and me right now is September 11th, we just wanted to sort of delve into these guys in part because they're recruiting uh, and effectively recruiting from our own country. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it, it's a little shocking. It's that they yeah. could find people who who are I mean I don't know what it is is it that the they're able to find people who are disenchanted with the United States or is it that they're find 
young men who just want to go off and fight in a battle that believe in sort of the Islamic cause, you know? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know that we have any answers for it. Although people all over the internet are more than happy to tell you exactly what the answer is yeah. for all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know that we necessarily know that. Um, I think I think what we need to be talking about, though, is the concept of radicalization. Um, not just Islamic radicalization, but radicalization in general. Yeah. The, the psychology that leads people to, to want to be radical, to yeah. want to be uh, so tight, to be tied up in something so crazy out there yeah. well, I'm, I'm that they'll kill. Yeah. yeah, and I'm convinced that this is the, 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 the same person, right? Mm. Who, who goes off to fight in, for, for ISIS uh, from a foreign country, uh, just given a, a slightly different background, could just as easily end up in some militia up in Idaho. Right. Or some be some grand conspiracy theorist or be, you know, whatever, right? Like, I, uh, yeah, just, you know, just collecting thimbles like mad. Right. You know, like, just like these obsessive you know personalities who who i mean that that's again maybe we should have a little we're not healthcare professionals yeah we, we don't not study these things but it just seems to me that like that 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 these groups are able to tap into something that isn't going to work for most people but that does work for a set percentage of the population that will excite a young 23 year old texas man yeah so much because he feels so disenfranchised exactly. from from the society that he finds himself surrounded by mm -hmm. that he he's looking for something to join. Right. Uh, there's a guy named Michael Todd Wolf, who is a 23 year old Texas man yeah. who had, who pleaded guilty to attempting to provide mere material support to a foreign terrorist organization by traveling to Syria to fight with ISIS. That's unbelievable. I mean, we're talking and there, you know, there, his is one of many stories of people, you know, I mean, ISIS, has done this interesting job of sort of publishing, putting out all these videos, glorifying and glamorizing what they do. And, mm. you know, you get the chance to to kill people and you get the chance, but you get the chance to serve God in the the war and the blah, blah, blah. And it's it's thinking, it's, it's a moan, mindset that we've seen a million times before. And it's not just Islamic. No. I mean, we see this in the acts of Timothy McVeigh, who bombed uh, the Oklahoma City uh, federal, federal building. building. Mm -hmm. We see this in the acts of yeah of the of, of the militias gathering in the Idaho skinheads. and the yeah. skinheads. Exactly. Yeah. This is this this is, these are disenfranchised people. People who feel somehow like they are they are not served by the mindset that is prevalent where they are. Right. And there, there's something in them that feel that's stirred, and they want. They're looking. They're yeah, literally. I think you're absolutely right. Their eyes are looking for something else to glom onto. Uh -huh. And if the first thing they see, you know, that has a, a, a charismatic enough leader, is a cult, they go to the cult. Uh -huh. And if the first thing they see that has a charis, you know, that has a charismatic enough leader is ISIS, fuck it, I'm gonna go to Syria. Right. I don't know. I mean, I, I surely this is a surface analysis, but I can tell you that I've met people. I have a friend who, uh, and this, I think this is the same mindset. He went into the military and became a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. And I think it was literally, and he came home from that. And I, I mean, it's not a religious uh, organization, but it is in the sense that there's dogma there and there's a, uh, there's a, a culture there that he, of of obedience but it but a code that yeah. he could cling to and he came back wanting to kill oh yeah he, they, they, yeah he he came back he you know this was this was 10 years ago or so maybe a little less but he came back uh you know I, uh, just on leave mm -hmm. and was like oh i hope they send me to afghanistan and I was like, really? Why do you want to go to Afghanistan? He said, well, I don't want to go to Iraq. Iraq has a whole bunch of rules and everything. Everybody's got to act right in Iraq. But in Afghanistan, it's the Wild West. Huh. I'd just be killing people in Afghanistan. And he was stoked on the idea of killing people. 
Yeah, my my brother was in the the army mm-hmm. um, back in the eighties, and I guess he was rather bummed because there were no opportunities, no deployments for mm-hmm. him. Yeah, but they they I mean, the way that he talks about it is that they really, I mean, they program you and get you ready to to kill, um, and they, uh, you know, yeah, you you you, I mean, they have to. That's your job, yeah. possibly. Yeah, is to go out and you need to be ready to fire a gun. Well, for some people it gives them a desire to actually follow through with that. Yeah. Well, that's so, what they're trained to do. Exactly. Uh, and and I don't see all that much difference between that and uh, and now You're ISIS. saying something possibly no. quite incendiary, Dan. No, 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 no. I am not <laughs> I want you to make sure that US, you clarify I'm not what you equi- just said. Okay, that's probably wise. <laughs> I am not trying to equate the U.S. military with ISIS. <laughs> because I but what did I, not want the emails that were about to come. No. But what I am saying is that some of the same minds that are attracted to the U.S. military, some of them. Now, I would say largely this is not the case, but there are plenty of people, plenty of you know young men and women in the U.S. who are attracted to the U.S. military for the same reason that other people are attracted to ISIS. Which is that they uh, they see a code they see a a they, they something see a, to belong to a right. fraternity of sorts indeed yeah indeed and and a place and, to belong and a place that 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 where they can live out violent fantasies that they have a place where the where the violence that they feel inside of them can be expressed and see, outwardly and that's the part that I I I fear that you might be right but I just I have a really hard time with that. Okay. Now, not that, you know, like, again, I fear that you're probably right. Yeah. But I, I, I just, it's the part that I, I, I just can't wrap my head around. It's it's a tricky situation. Uh, so, to me, I guess what I'm getting at, I guess where I'm angled on this conversation is that I've been reading all of these, you know, on CNN and all uh, all, all over the internet, all of these articles about... How do we stop ISIS? And how do we stop, you know, Islamic terror? And how, yeah. do we, how do we stop terror in general? How do we stop this wave that's happening? Yeah. And I think that, and, you know, most of the answers are, you know, have something to do with bombs or guns or whatever. But part of the truth has to be that we need to... F- craft a much better much stronger society that can re-enfranchise people well we need opportunity in these regions right, right? we need well, people who who are growing up and feeling like they have a future indeed right that that that, that because they 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 feel like they have to fight for a future whereas there's not one just sitting out there for them absolutely right? and so well, like, and we kind of broke the system in iraq and part of what happened was that you know we when we went into Iraq and, you know, disbanded Saddam Hussein's army, suddenly there was a whole bunch of military trained people who didn't have an army. Right. And they and they were easily recruited to this task. But I'm much more concerned. I mean, I think the Middle East is going to it has many, many, many has decades and decades uh, of hard road ahead of them. Well, um, especially with the, with Armageddon. <laughs> well, yeah. With, I, mean, I mean, Armageddon is not going to make this easy for The them. second coming of Christ is just going to complicate <laughs> things even more. I think you're right about that. But what I'm saying is, if they're able to recruit people from our countries, from, Ooh, yeah. from, from the U.S., from Canada, from the U.K., from France, if, yeah. if we're sending them people, we're doing something wrong. Yeah. We're not enfranchising our people. We are letting people people are not just falling through the cracks. We're nowhere near them. Yeah. And we're failing as a society. It is the exception rather than the rule. Of course it we're is. We're not all of our our young, you know, Muslim men are not flocking to uh to to Iraq and Syria right now. Right. Like like thank God that 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 this is a minor this is an yeah. extreme minority. Sure, sure. You could list, you know, the people that we know about on a, you know, in a short p- paper. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever that means. 
All I'm how saying, many fingers and toes does it take? All of them, Dan? I don't. I yes, <laughs> yes. You have to have uh, four people's fingers and toes. Oh my goodness! I don't actually know that. I would just say, I, I guess what I, where I'm getting at is, I see our society as in need of a lot of fixing. And I think part of the deal, part of the problem, and I can't lay everything on religion as much as we in the atheist community would love to just lay all of the problem on religion. Well, I'll lay a lot of problem on Islam. Well, I will lay a lot of the problem on religion in general. And here's how I make this argument. For me, when you teach children not how to construct thought, not how to examine their own selves, but rather to be obedient to a system of dogma Mm. and that's all you teach them right you do not prepare them for adulthood and you but what you do prepare them for is systems of dogma and if so if they don't like the one that they were raised in they will find another one to jump to yeah uh and i so i think that rat is you know i think that there is blame to be laid at the feet of those who refuse to teach to, to as a society to teach our children critical thinking uh safe and constructive psychological practices like we are not looking at this the way we need to be as a society right like how we're teaching our children and i think that that's a problem and you know people are homeschooling their kids to get them away from critical thought critical thinking right so that i think is as much a problem as anything we have here in the United States. And that I think can be, can we can, I think we can lay some of the blame for all of this problem for, for, you know, for all of these problems at the feet of that. Yeah. Not all of the blame. Certainly. This right. does, it's not a panacea that, that solves all of our problems, but I think that, you know, if we could at least just teach our kids how to think properly, mm. we would solve some of these problems. I don't know. Perhaps. Maybe. As long as people feel disenfranchised, though, uh, that's right. That's a recipe for disaster, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Right. Well, and but the other thing is that you know, as long as we're doing the religion thing, as long as we're creating in group and out group, mm-hmm. uh, we're creating, we're setting up lots of tensions. We're setting up lots of dichotomies and, you know, for us or against us sort of situations, even mm-hmm. on our own shores. It's the it's the religious versus the atheists, and uh, and it, as, as long as we're doing that, then war is our model for living life, and I don't like that at all. No. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think we've said enough that people might have some things to say to us. I yeah, and we I don't feel like enough we've hot. I don't feel like we've waded into the. Um, the particulars of the whole thing, which right. is what I really didn't want to talk about. Right. Um, um, if you have anything that you would like to add to this conversation, this is because all we're doing right here is opening a conversation. Um, please feel free to, to write into us. Uh, the way to do that is podcast at thank God I'm atheist.com. Or, of course, uh, we do love to hear your voice. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Leave us a voicemail. Right. Um, And remember, uh, on the voicemails, you've got three minutes maximum. You're much much more likely to get played if you can keep it under a minute and a half. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, So so try and just have your, your thoughts compiled and ready. And then, and then we'll we'll try and get you on. Yeah. Um, or, or go to the Facebook page and continue the conversation with each other there. Uh, the the place to go for that is facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. And, of course, there is something of a discussion at uh, on Twitter as well. At sure. TGI Atheist. Tweet the shit out of it. Yeah. Uh, ThankGodImAtheist.com is the website. Yeah. Thanks to Mackenzie for all of your hard work on our Facebook page. And thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for letting us use their music. We love you all dearly. Hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. <laughs>